It says it's not yeah, connected. Yeah, it's ready to go. Okay. It was, that's a slow. Yeah, it's, it's cloudy. I don't know how. Okay, we're live. Pop out. Um, hello, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda from uh, Deep South Homestead. And we I are, get, always get the biggest kick out of Wanda setting this stuff Okay, up. hush. I'm <laughs> doing it. I, I forgot. Uh, honestly, I really mm -hmm. forgot and didn't put the time as 7 p.m. So a lot of people thought we should have started way while ago. And the recording's probably going to have some blank space. Um, I'm not sure, about 15, 20 minutes of blank space, I'm sure. Uh, okay. People from everywhere popping in, because I saw All right, a lot let's of start people. off here. Let me get my glasses right here. I see a question right off They were bat. talking about slugs. Uh, I see one right here. Nikki McManus, Mains, McManus, I want to plant Danny corn for seed for next year. How far apart and what kind of square? I have limited seeds. Danny corn plants best around 16 inches apart uh, in all directions. If you want to plant it in all directions, that's fine. Uh, I prefer two foot, but you can do it in 16 if you have a limited space uh, and you have limited seeds. I would do it 16 inch squares and make sure you fertilize it with you've got to put the nitrogen to it i mean do not skimp on nitrogen yeah y'all are not really far behind because we just started uh it says we started 15 20 minutes ago and yeah, we didn't we did not uh, uh, i just forgot to set the time yeah uh, so y'all didn't miss yeah anything. actually i came in here a while ago and sit down and said wow they're coming in here early the chat's going i went and sat down over there and was looking at some other stuff and Wanda. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you, we gotta I didn't know. go. <laughs> I didn't know that she had started it already. I didn't know I'd started it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, forget, y'all. I forget from time to time. Oh. How do you get rid of poison oak around the garden? Well, with ours, we just mow it off. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. We mowed our poison oak off. We just took a lawnmower and mowed it off. Uh, but that, it comes right back. It comes back, but if you keep mowing it off enough, it, it eventually you'll you'll eventually kill it. Yeah. Um, so. Oh. You want to tell them about our day? We have had a pretty exciting day today. <laughs> uh, really, a week. Well, yeah, it's been a whole week of babies. Um, although I can't complain. You know, uh, we knew all three of them would be close. We, yeah, because we put them all three in here at the same time, basically. So we knew that three of them would be exactly calving at about the right time. But uh, the only difference was Dolly's calf came, you know, a couple of months earlier. Well, Dolly's was at Christmas, but she was yeah. bred by she was bred Dexter. by Dexter, and now Duke bred the three girls here. That yes, would be and we didn't know what kind of calf Duke was going to throw. Yeah, you know this what is I mean? his so first time. This is his first cows or heifers to breed, and Duke has done a fantastic job. The only problem is they're all boys. Uh, he doesn't know how to throw a girl. All he knows how to do is throw boys. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela. I feel uh, better. Uh, A-S-T-E-W-A, I don't know. Uh, do you need to replant the kitchen mini plants to a larger planter right away? If you keep them out of the cold, they would live in that little pot probably another couple of weeks or so. But they do need to be up-potted because they had some really good roots on mine. So I would up-pot them within the next week or two and keep them out of the cold for a little bit. But I did put mine out in the... But I've Wanda's got a mini is, greenhouse. One has there. a mini greenhouse over hers in the Vego bed. Yes. Oh. Uh, but tell me, but the week now, the week has been quite challenging. Uh, we uh, started off with uh, Trixie having a having a calf, and then we, we got to we video videoed, the, yeah, we got to video Trixie's, and then you know a, a couple of, couple of days later, Hadassah actually went into the barn in a stall, and we were over here working on the high tunnel. And had no idea, <laughs> other than Duke went to the barn and Duke went to just hollering. I mean, he was like, 
she needs somebody, you know what I mean? And I he told, was just going crazy. He was going crazy. I told Wanda, I said, we better go let Barn and see what's well, going actually, on. actually, I took off on the Ranger, went up there and yeah. left you down here working on the high tunnel. And I went up there, and when I got there, I'm like, oh, crap. She's having this baby now, and she's in a stall, which was good. Yeah. But I couldn't get around and get her shut down, and I said, I hope these others don't come in here. I took off back. I said, you got to come now. We've got to go get this shut up before the cows get in there. And we took off back, and you shut her up then. Yeah, I went ahead and shut the stalls the up and stopped the other cows from being able to get in there with her. And I told Wanda, I said, look, this, these stalls are nothing but dry cow manure on the ground and dirt everywhere. I told her, <laughs> I said, I'm going to go get take the grapple, and I'm going to go get a grapple full of hay and bring it up here to the barn. And we're going to spread this hay around in that stall where she can have that baby and some hay. And, and one Trixie of took, what, two hours? Yeah. We were over there with her. So I, it was about time for break. I took off back and I grabbed me some coffee. And I told him, I said, I'll be back in 10 minutes. And I went and we've got a place we can fix coffee and stuff. I met fixed coffee, grabbed our snack stuff for the morning because we were out at the high tunnel and took off. And Danny said, I'm going to get some hay. So you went for hay and I went for you coffee. You went for coffee. <laughs> and you know, getting a grapple, I mean, we had to come up here and get my uh, grapple tractor up here at the uh, high tunnel. And I drove back around, went out in the field, reached over in the hay ring, got some hay, drove back to the barn. I dumped it in the uh, entrance of the barn, got off the tractor and looked, and that cow had already had that calf. Yeah, because he, I was videoing and I, I was, I don't remember what we were saying, and he was dumping hay and he looked and he goes, wait, he almost dumped it on top of the baby. I almost threw it on the baby. And yeah. I turned around with the camera and there's the baby. You know, I'm like, oh my goodness, that was so fast. I mean, that, that was fast. Then today, my son Jesse and his wife Patty came, and we decided we were going to go out to his dad's place. And we were gone less than three hours, or pretty close to three hours. I well, was before we two. left, we were driving out the, the driveway, and I turned around and looked, and Duke was just hollering again. Yeah. And I, and Shushan was standing over next to a, a, a bushy tree there, and I told her, I said, Yeah. I said, you remember Duke hollered a lot whenever uh, uh, Hadassah was having a baby and Trixie. I said, you reckon that calf, cow is fixing to have that calf? And we said, well... Maybe not, and we didn't plan to be gone very long, but then all of a sudden, you know, we were gone like three hours, and we came back, and lo and behold, we drove up, and the baby was already up walking around. Shushan done licked him clean, mm -hmm. and he was already nursing, Yeah. and I was like, now he was still wet as all get out. He had not <laughs> dried off, so I knew it had to be within the last 30 minutes or less, and she had not passed the afterbirth or anything like that, so I knew... I told her, I said, this baby just got here within the last half an hour at least. Yeah, so both of them that we were worried about, Shushan and Hadassah, gave birth without us even being here. Yeah. We are present. But the deal is, we didn't name Shushan or Hadassah. No. We got them from Miss Tam, and uh, I hadn't even let Tam know she's got another baby. <laughs> yeah, we got these. These were usually... uh, Hadassah and Shushan. Uh, came she from, named. She named, Miss Tam named them. Uh, Shushan was, if I'm correct, and I haven't went back and looked at the papers, but I believe she is from a super udder cow yeah, from, I was think it she from, is. from Canada? A breed from Canada. A breed I'm from not Canada. Because sure she's the originally lineage. from Minnesota up there. Yeah, her I mother think, came from Minnesota. Yeah. She was brought from Minnesota. So, uh, and her mother has what's called super udders. Her, her teats are really big and like... And produces lots of and milk. And produces and lots A2. of milk. A2 milk, yes. So, we're hoping. And I can milk Shushan and I can milk Hadassah. Neither one of them, mm -hmm. they, don't get, they don't let me bother, bother me touching them or anything. So, we have two that we know we can milk. Dolly we used to milk in the past. So we could probably get Dolly back to being able to be milked, but she's Dexter Jersey Cross. Yeah, and we're really excited. But since Miss Tam named both of them, Shushan, Shushan and Hadassah. Hadassah, Hadassah's baby we named Jet. Jet, 
Because it's jet black. Yeah, because it's jet black. And because our patrons kind of named both of our babies so far. So we thought we'd let you guys tonight name the baby. We'll pick a name out of whatever y'all give us. Yeah, y'all give us, a, y'all give us a and, name uh, for a, a baby boy tonight. Her, his mama was Shushan. Now, Shushan, I don't forgot what it was. It, uh, Hadassah is, in, is Esther. Yeah. Shushan. I thought that was a city, Shushan. Shushan might have been a city. In uh, Israel. In, I, over that way somewhere. Over there somewhere. I can't remember the reason. We'll find out. You gonna look it up? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can uh, look that up. I was going to and I forgot. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't, okay, I got that. You gotta get out. <laughs> He's reading my messages. Uh, I'm reading so one of his messages while I'm looking at something here. He got sidetracked, y'all. Um, anyway, this week uh, we did plant our Cherokee yellow wax beans. We planted two little rows. And uh, gonna see how they do. I'm thinking of trying to get one of my green stalks all revamped and put them in uh, the green stalk and see how they do in a green stalk. I've not tried the yellow wax beans in a green stalk. Um, something I thought might be pretty interesting. Um, the meaning of the name Shushan, uh, they have Shushan Parim, uh, which I'm not gonna go into that. That has to do with biblical stuff. The, the name Shushan, the, the name of it is Lily, Rose, or Joy. Okay. Uh, okay. And it and it means in she knows. Um, and it's also... It's a modern Iranian town called uh, town it's of in Iran. Shush. It's located in uh, Shushan. Let's see here. Shush is identified as Shushan mentioned in the book of Esther. I knew both of them came out of Esther. And other biblical books. Yeah. Okay. Both the names came out of Esther. It's a modern Iranian town of Shush. S-H-U-S-H. Mario, okay. fast as lightning. Shane, Buddy, uh, Angus, Bucky, uh, Maya. They're saying it's the name for Lily. Yeah, okay. Shushan was the residence Ephraim, of the kings of Persia. Ephraim, Eli, no, Elon. Okay. Uh, Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Uh, Ezra Maynard. 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 I knew uh, that. Who is that? <laughs> yeah, that reminds uh, me of a comedy of some no, sort. No, that was no, that was a there was a program with someone named Maynard. I know. On it. Uh, I can't remember what it was uh, now. Um, let's see where are we at. Jethro. Uh, no. No, no, no. We ain't naming nothing. Jethro. Uh, Elvis. No, we got a Elvis is in the pond down there. Jasper. No Barneys. Barney. No, we had we talked about Barney today. Yeah, we don't want to do Barney. Terminator. Shahar. Let me say Mr. Danny named one buddy. It was so okay. hard, hard headed black, it went away. The word for in Hebrew for black. How, how do you say it? Shahar? Shahar. Is that it? I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, and then we got um, Samson. We've had a Samson. We before. had a Samson. We had a pig. a pig. That was a pig that was Samson. Now that might not be a bad name. How do you say that? Mahan? H M A. Something like that. Ephraim again. Jacob. Ezra. Kansas. Oh, hi from Kansas. <laughs> yeah, that says hi from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Adam. Uh, I kind of like Samson's kind of sticking out there. Uh, it's just kind of uh, like ringing, you know. Shavis. Okay, now who said Samson? Word. Uh, wisdom of the word. Okay. Wisdom of the word. We got to keep that one in mind. There's a uh, Daniel. Uh, we, got, we got a Daniel. We got a Daniel. I'm a Daniel. And Deidre said Samson also. Uh, okay. Uh, Enoch, Jesse. Gosh, it went to. Oh, flying. it went to flying by. Uh, Ruger. We've already got a jet. We named got a jet the other already. black one jet this time. Uh, Cash is in Johnny, Dozier, Brisket, <laughs> Wally, Mordecai, Samuel, Vindicator, Samson. There's another. There's Samson. another Samson or Simon. Uh, oh boy, that jumped. Jacob, Job, Shirley. Why would we name a boy Shirley? This boy's name Shirley. Yeah, I know. I know a man named Shirley. That's I what I'm talking about. There yeah. are guys named Shirley. I hate to be one of them, but they are. Shoney, Titan, Boxcar, Beverly, Ma Beverly Mitchell 
says, Boaz. I vote for Samson. Abby uh, says, I like Samson. Enoch, Titan, Pepper, a See, boy you, named Sue. You have to be <laughs> careful what you name things because biblical names mean stuff. And they carry with them some, you know. Another one likes Samson. They carry with them some, uh, some pretty serious implications. Simon, Slick, Levi, Caleb, Moses, Jacob, T-Bone, Frankie. T -bone. <laughs> We've had a Frankie, but the, again, We had a Frankie, was, but that was a sheep. That was a sheep. It was a big male <laughs> ram. Jesse. Now, my son's name is Jesse, J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E, yeah. And he just left he here. Just I don't left. know if he'd want a cow named after him or not. Probably. No, he's a bull. Well, I mean, a bull, whatever. Solomon, Jeremiah, Samson again, um, Mr. Sue. Kazak, Another Hebrew Samson, for strong. Noah, Hamburger, Sully. I like Sully, but... Um, it was somebody named Sully. I don't remember who it was. It was on a TV show. It was show. a TV program. But... Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Gosh, look at all the names. It's going crazy. It's going, whoa. Moose, Wally, Kirby, Snowball, yeah. Thaddeus, Joseph, Winston, Olive, Olive Beefy, Beefy, Jiffy, Jiffy Jasper, <laughs> Jiffy, Dallas. <laughs> Jiffy works. <laughs> TV home, Zachariah, Yeti, okay. Theo, Boscar. Okay, Samson? Uh, Barak. No. No Barak. <laughs> Virgil, Boaz, Eclipse, Ribeye. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking Samson. I'm thinking, or it's Blackjack. <laughs> oh, we ain't uh, going to remember these names long Samson anyways. Samson I'll remember. Samson, Medicine Woman. That was the name of that that had Sully in it. Oh yeah, Medicine yeah, Woman. yeah. Sully was the was the long haired guy that was in, in there. In uh, that, Medicine that, Woman. Yeah, Medicine Woman. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, my mama right. used to watch that all the time. That's the only reason I knew. Okay, so I don't remember who said all it right. first. Do you remember what I, who the person was that said it first? You gotta go way back. I <laughs> think it's been turning for a while. I'm trying to find Lippy. Do you remember who I said? Because I sure don't. Uh, it was way oh, back here. Man. Allison yeah, says you gotta she keep on slick. going back. Uh, yeah, that thing jumped. Samson, but it is way on past that. Who was the first person, Lippy, that said Samson? Keep going back. You know, you just keep going back. It won't backwards. go any further. That's as far as it goes. Oh, you can we, only we're go... limited. Yeah. Oh, we're limited. So we gotta. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know who said it. I remember the name was a a, a biblical name, Wisdom. Was it something wisdom? of wisdom. Wisdom of the word or something like that? Yeah, I think that was it. Send me an email and say I'm the one that named the calf Samson. Um, wisdom of the word, I think that's how it was. Something done. like that. Yeah. I think. Um, but, okay, so I told him we got our beans done, the yellow wax beans. They're yes, not up yet. They're not up yet. Well, I saw some crooks coming up out of them today. So they're, and they're, then our English peas, most of those Wisdom come of up. the Word said I did. Okay, send me an email at deepsouthhomestead at gmail.com. And uh, we, um, the English peas are up, most of them. And what wasn't up, Patty, my daughter-in-law, replanted in the spaces. Uh, the fingerling potatoes are up. The other potatoes are just are breaking, are, are the, breaking ground. the ground pretty good, the little red ones. I picked up. Uh, Chris one. wasn't, I mean, he wasn't going to get his fingerlings I got for him. Oh, Chris. Yeah, if he is coming through, he needs to stop. Let me see. Catch that message right quick. I just happen to think about it. He needs to come get his taters. Sorry about that, guys. We got so much going on. <laughs> it's, this been, it's been all week this like this. has been this. all week like this. Um, Lippy said she can't go back that far either, but we got it. It was words of wisdom. Um, yeah. Okay. If he, if he hadn't done went by, if we'll he hasn't see. done passed us by, we have your taters, Chris. Yeah. Maybe he's listening. Um, yeah. but we had, uh, some things that Danny's dad's, we had to go do and, um, uh, Jesse and Chris helped us out and, uh, yeah. Patty and Jen. And, uh, so we were gone just for a little while. And uh, Chris and Jen should be coming through in a little bit, and if they hadn't already, Danny's got to hand him some taters. I do. I got. <laughs> we have our own taters that we raise every year, and uh, these French fingerlings are awesome. You know, and uh, what's he saying? 
Okay, he, just for a second. Okay. Uh, um, but anyway... Is the door unlocked? No. <laughs> the door is not unlocked. This one has got to go unlock our door. We don't usually lock the door, but tonight, for some strange reason, I just locked it. I don't even know why I locked it. Um, but anyway... How has the weather been where you guys are at? It has been not bad here, but not the best either. We had uh, we got an inch and a half of rain. Uh, did you leave the door open? I did with the light on. Why? So they can see. You don't have to leave the door open. I shut the 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 other door shut. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyway. I, uh, you know, we've had an interesting week. The weather, it rained an inch and a half. And it was a steady, slow rain, though, for all night and probably half of the next day, which I thought was really, really good uh, for us. We need the rain. We was not complaining about the rain. Uh, Jesse and I today actually spread uh, lime on all of our fields around where we are going to be uh, cutting our hay from. We went ahead and limed all of them today. Which brings me to this point. Let me go ahead and talk about this. <laughs> this right here, guys. We just ordered some of these and got them in uh, from Grower Solutions. If you don't have these, I highly urge you to get these and test your soil. They're not that expensive. What we pay? 30 bucks? Something like that. Like 30 bucks a piece for these? It's uh, and, growersolution.com. We have a, I think, slash. It's in the it's description, in the description with below. Deep South on it. Uh, yeah. You get a percentage off. I don't I want to open it is. up here. I want to kind of open it up. We ain't never opened this one. I just I just dug into it. This is what it looks like when you open it up. You get a... Uh, That's your... That's you got gotta to scan it. You got to scan to it. To register it. It has to be registered online. Once you get it, you register what 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 all you want to test. They send this. you a little packet. To, uh, it's already got the envelope thing on it. Your uh, what do you call that? Your that's your return. Your return stamp. label. Yeah, that, that's paid for already. Then you get this right here. It looks like this. You get a scoop, and you get this little bottle here that's got this liquid stuff in it and you put the one scoop of dirt in there that you take out of your garden area and you don't pour the liquid out put it in it shake it up real good and then put it in this put it in the mail and it's all over with they'll you can get a email uh yeah a matter of fact i told one i said we need to keep several of these because once you buy them there's no more money to spend you everything's paid for after that and you mail it in, and this company really does a jam-up job. I mean, I'm telling you, I am so happy. I won't do the uh, the county extension anymore because the county extension, we used to do those, uh, and they just do NPK. That's all. Maybe zinc, you know, something like mm -hmm. that. These things do the minerals. I mean, like boron, copper, zinc, you name it. Uh, it does all of it. The calcium, the pH. It does it all, and I and, and it tells you how much to add per year. Everything you just put on here, what you're, um, what you're trying to uh, get it for a garden. Ours was a garden, pecan trees, hay, and all that. All right, imagine, imagine wants to know about my cookbook. We're going to be giving one away when we hit 300,000 subscribers. We got all kinds of things we're going to give away on patreon as well as here on the live um and i said the word giveaway okay we're gonna bless somebody, bless somebody. quit saying giveaway yeah because sometimes that word gets us a bunch of uh it gets a uh, bots in bots here. in here using that word but we're gonna bless somebody so i do have i think two or three cookbooks and i'm gonna do yep. one on patreon and one on a live i know because i know i have two because danny found two in my car I found two in the car so <laughs> we are going to do that, but buying them, I don't have any. So oh. none for sale. Uh, Michigan Lifestyle, no, that does not register your garden online. It, it plays no part in your garden. No. It registers you, nothing with anywhere. All you're doing is sending an email, <sighs> and uh, they send, and, and you do an address because you want them to send a hard copy, I guess, yeah. an email and an address, and that's all they do. 
Now, what, I, I don't know what after that, but anyways, that's what they do. Now, why is it buffering? <laughs> oh, uh-oh. What you would call it, Homestead said, you're doing it again, Danny. I just looked up the Mississippi Extension Office info today. Thanks. I don't use them anymore. I strictly do the the grower solution one now. Get more info. And you I get saw, a lot more info. Somebody said they've even found somebody that does uh, aluminum. And I don't know where you would find somebody that tests for aluminum, but I don't uh, know do they. Sue Ladine says she cannot find the soil, the soil cat test. Soil test kit. I'll get it out in a minute below. I don't have it. a link It's below. not a link. you got to go to Grower Solutions. Go to the Grower Solutions link below. And then on their website, you'll uh, type in soil kits. It'd probably be under extras. I don't know what they call it. I don't know. I'm uh, not sure. But it's, uh, they have soil kits listed there. Okay. Somebody, uh, Wisdom of Words says, I'm sorry, what is your email, Wanda? DeepSouthHomestead at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you. Um... Let's see. Howdy from Mickey and Kathy in the rainy hot hills of Tennessee. Supposed to be in the mid-70s in a few days. How hot was it today? It got up to 57 today. No, I'm sorry. It got up to 67, 67 today. It was almost 70. It was almost and 70 And probably degrees. tomorrow it will be. Does bagged unopened compost stay good for a second year? Compost. Let me put it to you. Let me tell y'all something. Okay, let's let's stop for a moment. Let's get this. Let's talk about this. I don't care if you're buying compost, uh, potting soil, anything like that. If it's waterlogged when you buy it, like one and I have been to places where the they leave that stuff sitting outside and it's rained on it. Waterlogged potting soil, compost, black cow, whatever you want. If it's wet. Do not buy it because it's when it when it gets wet like that, it becomes anaerobic. There is nothing in it that can actually the uh, the it just it's just no good. Okay, there's nothing alive in it anymore. It has become dead. So do not buy waterlogged pot and soil compost anything like that. All right. So Double A said his wife is wanting him to put out peas this year. Do you recommend a machine? Or should we just shell by hand small plot? Uh, depends on but how... You've got dried peas, I'm assuming. I would just shell them by hand. It don't take very long. You can shell out 10 peas and plant a half an acre. No. It, <laughs> no, uh, no I'm just joking. Well, it depends but it on what they're enough. calling peas now. If they're calling English peas or if they're calling field peas. Yeah. Cow peas. Is now, that cow that? peas are easy to shell out. Uh, if you... If, and well, English peas if they're dry. Isn't if they're dry, English peas yeah. are okay. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, uh, okay. let's see here. I'm just looking to see what all. All right, Allison put up. This link takes you through Deep South Homestead's Grower Solution link right straight to the soil kit. So uh, click Allison's link and yep. you go to the soil kit. Yes. Where is an affordable place to buy soil my, for raised beds? Need lots. Well, it depends on where you live at. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Wanda and I just, we just happen to have... Have a friend that had We some. have a friend who <laughs> is really good with soil, so we was able to get our soil from him. Miss uh, Lippy does have a YouTube channel. Y'all check her out. Uh, she does a little bit of everything. She yes. is Miss Lippy. Um, let's see, what are we doing here? Um, our 300,000 <laughs> subscriber giveaway. Let me brush this in here right quick. When we hit 300,000, I do have the cookbooks. We have, uh, Miss Allen, Allison sent a, uh, well, she didn't send it. She's going to mail to somebody a canner is a pressure canner. What, what was the name? Um, I don't know what I, I got a that. picture, but I forgot what. I'd have to scroll back a lot to find it. Uh, Allison put what kind of canner that was. I done forgot. Anyway, now I'm going to do a big box of Canon supplies and giveaways. We have three of Danny's. Danny has three books. I'm going to do a combination of his books to somebody. Um, Vego Beds is going to give away a Vego bed. Um, 
When and how? I don't know anything about this. After we hit 300,000. Okay, when we hit 300,000, Vego Beds is going to give away a bed. Now, we will be giving it away, whatever, but yeah. it's, it's a Vego Bed through them. They they offered that. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, Books. I have not oh, been yes. to the post office yet, but I do know I will have some Ron Foster books. Um, what's it? So, Old Fart Survival Guide and some of his other books. Uh, the Longest Road. I think I got that right. Um, I haven't been to the post office, but I'm sure they're there by now. We just mm -hmm. forgot. Um, then we're going to have one, at least one Carl, Carla Emery book. I was supposed to have more, but I've lost the email. So <laughs> I lost a lot of emails this past week. This one that lost a lot of stuff this past week. Yeah. I was cleaning up emails and I lost a lot, so I don't have these people's emails to go back to. Um, yes. What else we got? What else? Um, I know there's more. I've got stuff written down, but I can't think right now. I've been giving away seeds here and on Patreon. And you have to be paying attention to where we put stuff, whether it's in a video, in a description, in the comments. Or just on Patreon, okay. I just throw something up occasionally. Let me, uh, I gotta go back to this one right here. Kathy Elkins. Uh, ah, where's my glasses at here? You want me to read it? Okay. <laughs> How did you bend your knife for spoons? For Spoon. Spooning your onions. I broke all my knives and need a new set. I <laughs> did. <laughs> Mine was butter knives. It was a butter knife, and I put it in a vise, and I bent it very, very slowly. Uh, I did not heat it to bend it. Uh, maybe, but I don't know. Maybe we just got cheap knives. I mean, <laughs> Daddy just. I just bent it. I think it. you took some of those cheap ones. I mean, you didn't take my good. I didn't take her good butter knives. No. I just took a. I just took an old cheap butter knife. Like you get at Walmart for a dollar. Yeah, something. they're really the cheap. The dollar store, you get four for a dollar or something. You know, and or I, two for a dollar, whatever they come in that package. Yeah, mine didn't. Uh, um, mine didn't break. Uh, I guess because we just bought cheap. Uh, Brother Donnie wants to know advice on pine beetles. Oh, oh pine beetles, Brother Donnie. If you, <laughs> it has a lot to do with the wrong, with the time of the year that pine trees are cut, uh, or if you skin the roots up on a pine tree on the ground, or if you skin the bark off of a pine tree. If it happens now, back when I was in the timber industry, uh, we used to use diesel fuel mixed with lindane. To spray the pine trees with to get rid of the pine beetles. Uh, now I don't know if lindane is still available or not on the I market. I don't think so. My dad was uh, a pest control, and I think they did they take that one off, or is that the only one that was left? I don't. I don't know. I haven't bought any in like 25 years. I don't know. I think lindane is one they took off. It might have been, but but I. I, which, whichever one you use chemicals for these beetles, just make sure you add some diesel fuel to it. Because the diesel adheres to the tree and absorbs into the bark and it holds the uh, the chemical in the tree a lot longer. It doesn't like water. If you just spray water on the bark of a tree, it just hits it and runs off to the ground. But you mix some diesel fuel with it. and you got to set a certain sprayer aside yeah. for doing that because once you use it, it's no good for nothing else because of the diesel fuel. But uh, All right, Vicky, we did get the bone sauce and we are going to be putting some out yes. because we do have one little deer that decides he wants to go somewhere he ought not to go. Yeah, we got... So, we fixed him to take care of that. Uh, Danny didn't have the the monitor on. I didn't have the monitor on... For uh, daytime. For infrared. I didn't have it on for daytime. And when we left to go out to my dad's today and we came back, the little deer had been in the garden during the daylight hours and the monitors are only set to go off at night. So, a while ago, I set them for daylight and night. Okay, now, what is the variety of your thornless blackberries? That produce a lot. That's called Freedom Blackberries. All right. How long does it take for your Danny corn to sprout? Uh, depends on the weather, but um, if it's decent weather, I'm going to say the soil's, say, 60 degrees to 70, somewhere between 60. I'll just say 60. It usually takes about seven days for it to sprout. Uh, and, but now, if it gets wet right off as soon as you plant it, like it comes with a shower on it, it'll come up in like five days. 
you can't get Lindane any longer. I didn't think so. I thought that they, my dad was a pest control man back. Yeah, in I don't the day remember. I don't know what took the place of Lindane. They took a lot off the market. They took Chlordane. They took Lindane. Uh, Denali. That's the name of the pressure cooker. Pressure canner. I'm canner. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, um, the other thing, Miss Lippies. No, no, uh, Kathy, no, we do not make um, swells for our blueberry bushes. It's not necessary. I'm looking. I know. I ha I knew I had more. I'm y'all are just. Huh? All right, we got winners in just a minute on something, but I'm gonna show y'all. Okay. Miss Lippy is donating this. Let me get it up here. I don't know if y'all can see it, and I can hold it still where it. This is a whole collection of Miss Lippy's um, spices. We've got her salves and her new, um, what is that called? Peppercorns. Yeah. They're red, white, and blue. If you guys liked her, uh, they were Mardi Gras colors, purple and gold. Purple and gold. Peppercorns. Go over and check out the red, white, and blue at Miss Lippy. This is a Miss Lippy's Blends .com, I think is what it is. Grandma's um, Garden says, so if the pot and soil gets to drain... Is uh, it okay? It, it's okay. Yes, as long as it doesn't stay saturated. You know, like they'll stack them up on pallets, and then it rains on them, and those pallets get saturated, and they stay wet. Uh, it, it, it kills anything. That, it, they're just no good after that. Okay, and I think Kathy and Mickey's in here, and we're going to do some um, coils. The... The coils that we used last year, copper coils, we're going to do a, a collection of those. That's I Suzanne. Uh, hey, Suzanne. Hey, Suzanne. She said, I just ordered mine, Danny. Um, I guess you're talking about the soil. I guess. Uh, uh, so, um, what else? Oh, let's see here. Oh, Miss Lippy's corned beef and cabbage egg rolls. Oh, she had me wanting to make some. And I ain't been nowhere because I don't keep egg roll thingies or whatever. No. <laughs> and I don't know how to make my own. Uh, but they, but we do have the cabbage. We do have cabbage. We have plenty of cabbage now. That's one thing we do have. Does it degrade your potting soil when you are you pour boiling water on it to kill flies, larvae? Miss Lippy did that. <laughs> uh -oh. That just kills the... Uh, it kills anything. Bugs. It kills anything that's alive in the soil. Yeah. Any kind of microbes in it, anything like that. In other words, you have sterile soil after that. You, and you have to start. You got. You got to start adding and building it, some stuff back in. Now, Miss Lippy probably adds things to hers when she does. She, she, but she boils hers every year because she don't. She buys some little things and starts. But she didn't do that this year, and she got burnt with the white flies. So. Uh, Wild Turkey says Biffin, B-I-F-E-N, can be used to spray for southern pine beetles. Uh, uh, Mr. Donnie, that may be uh, the only choice out there. I've been out of this business for so long now till I don't actually know what the new stuff is. Yeah. Have we grown blueberries? Oh, <laughs> have we grown blueberries. We just... I am actually in the process of getting rid of a piece of property that has a hundred on it. We have... Uh, Danny and I picked blueberries when we first got married 11 years ago. Yeah. For two or three years. Three years, I three think. Three years, yeah. And that paid our power bill and our taxes and everything else. For a year. Yep. And then we planted 50 trees of our own. And now over here at Pecan Grove, when we go over there, there is... Uh, Gosh, how many trees is there at Pecan Grove? There's probably <laughs> I lost count because you so many. There's probably 50 at Pecan Grove. So there's a lot because yeah. the ones that were in the cornfield, you've moved those so that it's all. There was 15 of them. Were they that many? I yep. didn't realize there was that there many. There was 15 of them and in that cornfield. In the hay field, there was six. six or seven in the hay field. And he's moved all those. And did you take any from here? No, I didn't move any from here. I didn't take any from... I wanted to get one from your mom and dad's I didn't take place. any from the barn, in front of the barn. I didn't move any from the front of the barn. Okay. I would love to be able to get one from your mom and dad's place. I'm just yeah, saying. Well, I don't have a... You don't have a way to get it up because they're trees. I'm well, talking 30-year-old well, trees. Yeah. But that's part of the property. That's, I can't take that because it goes with the property. Yeah. yeah. His mom and dad's are like 
super fantastic. They're super fantastic. Uh, do blueberries yield fruit the same year? Uh, it's it depends on the age size, of them, the, yeah. the age of the tree. If the tree's like three years old, yeah, it'll produce berries. Uh, <laughs> Would you consider mailing me blueberry bushes to Michigan? I think I don't think our blueberries on... would work in Michigan because no, we have ours wouldn't. We have a different blueberry variety down south than y'all have up north. You would have to look online through companies and order for what would grow in your area. Yeah, y'all get too cold for ours. Yeah, ours would not make it. Uh, I have not freeze-dried or dehydrated cabbage, but I have put it in the freezer and I have put it in jars. It is okay in jars, but it's very, very mushy. Uh, it would be great freeze-dried, I'm sure, but ours don't ever last that long. Ed Merritt says, when you move blueberries, do you have to prune the tops and the roots? Well, it depends on how you move them. I mean, I took my tractor and I took the bucket and I scooped up the roots, the dirt, and everything, I didn't even disturb the roots under the trees. I mean, I just picked up a giant bucket full of dirt and had already had a pre-dug hole. And I just set it all down in that pre-dug hole and just macked it down. And I, matter of fact, they're blooming over at Pecan Grove now. Yeah, Mimsy's Garden says air propagates some. We don't have time on those bushes, cause, um, but we could take some and bring home and... and try sprouting we could cut some tips off of some yeah. of them and try sprouting i think we might do that just because i want one of both varieties she's got the tiff blues and the what is the the big premiere okay let me ask this for mr donnie he says danny i know i know you know a lot about buying and selling land so what does it mean when you sell property and but they retain the mineral rights okay mr donnie on a piece of property uh, when they talk about retaining the mineral rights, that's like uh, oil rights, uh, gravel, any of that stuff that is uh, on the property. That person maintains the right. Uh, if you ever decided you was going to drill for oil on that property or you're going to dig a gravel pit on it or anything like that, they get the royalties off of all of that. I mean, you get a small percentage, but they get the major percentage of it. They can't come in and tell you what to do with your property. They just hold the mineral rights so that in the event you ever decide to have anything done to the property like it that. It involves the minerals. It involves the minerals that's underneath that ground. They, they still maintain the right to draw the money from that. Not necessarily you. Now, you get a royalty check, but they get the main royalty off of it. All right. Um, can you mulch around blueberries with pine straw? That's yes. Right. Yes, you can do pine straw around uh, around blueberries. All right. You always want to try to get the mineral rights with a piece of property if you can. But it's uh, hard. It's nowadays. very very hard to do it nowadays. They even have the water rights. At most yeah, in places. Texas they maintain. Well, some of your western states they maintain the water rights. You can't even drill a well unless you pay for the water rights to that piece of property because somebody else owns the water. Yeah. Now, don't sell your mineral rights. If you have mineral rights, you keep the mineral rights. Have I ever canned collards? If so, did you like... I can't remember if I did can Yes, we did collards. Did I do collards? Yes. I did cabbage, We did cabbages, kale, kale turnips. Turnips, collards. We, done we did all do it. the collards, okay. I couldn't remember. Yes. It just takes, I think, 90 minutes. Natural gas also, that's right. A Michigan Lifestyle said, I remember that, natural gas. Um, Are coffee grounds good for blueberries? Coffee grounds? Coffee grounds are high in nitrogen. They're not going to hurt your blueberries, that's for sure. You can put it around, it's not going to hurt them. Wild Rose said they ordered the Vigo bed on wheels last week. Oh, you're oh, going to love that one. If you're going to love that concrete. one if you got concrete to put it on. Or a porch or something. Yeah, you're going to love that. Um, I'm wanting one of the little small, it, it's not on wheels, but it's the same size, I think, uh, tomato bed just with a trellis in it just because. I, I've got a couple of places I want to put some stuff, and I'm like, I think I'd like one of them little tomato beds. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, prep for eternity. Let me, uh, Mr. Donnie, let me mention something else to you. Anytime you purchase a piece of property, always ask for the, uh, ask if they have a timber deed on that piece of property. If it's got any kind of timber on it, uh, make sure 
that there is no timber deed on that property because if there is a timber deed then someone can come on the property at any given moment they wish to and they can cut all the timber off the property and you cannot do a thing about it so make sure that there is not a timber deed okay um, when Danny and I were talking about the yellow wax beans, Miss Lippy uh, pulled some winners. So I'm going to name three people, and y'all have to contact me, deepsouthhomestead at gmail.com, with a name and an address. Um, Tex Bex, T E X B E X, um, Tommy Blanchard, and Ronald Hagen, H A G E N. If the three of y'all will contact me by email, I will send you out some uh, Cherokee yellow wax beans that Danny and I saved from seed. Um, this is something that I sent, I gave a pack away over on Patreon yesterday or today. And uh, if you're on Patreon, I have two winners that I announced either this morning or last night, I can't remember when, that have not contacted me. So if you're on Patreon, go check it out and see if y'all are one of the two winners. From a video, from a post that was done earlier. Okay, Carolyn Moore Smith. Danny, how do you feel about working in your garden on Sundays? Uh, doesn't bother me a bit because Sunday's no different. And I'm, I'm gonna let me tell you about my belief. Okay, in the Book of Romans, the first chapter. Uh, I believe it's the first chapter, if I remember correctly. The Scripture says. Some people hold, call some days holy. Some people call all days holy. Some people hold one day high. Some, you know, I'm one of these kind of people. I don't believe in any one particular day of the week being any better than any other day of the week. I look at every day of the week to me is the same. I believe Christ, I worship Christ every day of the week. I am not one of the, I believe when Jesus Christ came to this earth and he died on Calvary for our sins, he became my new high priest. And when you have a new high priest, you get a new set of rules in the scriptures. And you will find that over in Hebrews, I believe it is. And uh, from that point on, I live under I live under grace. I'm not going to argue the law with anybody. Uh, I've done been down that road. I was messianic for many, many years of my life. Um if you want to worship on the Sabbath, I'll be like the Apostle Paul said. Uh, I will not offend you. I will honor that with you if that's what you want to eat. Want to. Uh, some people say you can eat this and you can eat that. The Bible says that food is for the stomach. Um, it says that some people eat this, some people eat that. But all people do what they do to glorify God. Um, the Apostle Paul said, if a man eats meat, if, if eating meat offends my brother, then I will not eat meat. And the word meat there, if you go back and look it up, it actually means if eating pork uh, offends my brother, Paul said, then I won't do it. You know, so I don't hold all that stuff. And I'm not going to get into any arguments with anybody because it's not worth it. And that's what's wrong with Christianity today is people want to knit and pick with the word of God. They want to just get all blown out of shape because they say, well, the Bible says this or there's a law that says this. Well, there's actually 300 and something mitzvahs. If you want to keep all 300-something of them, then take your child out and have him stoned if you can't control him by the elders of the city. Uh, if, if, if you have a bastard child in your family, then you can't go into the congregation of God for so many generations. I mean, there's, there is tons of laws. If you're going to, Paul says, if you're going to keep one, you got to keep them all. You know, and that's the way I look at it. I don't, I'm not going to go into details with anybody about anything. Uh, I don't hold Sunday. Sunday's not Sunday's not a holy day, okay? Uh, Monday's not a holy day. Tuesday's not a holy day. Wednesday's not a holy day. God Himself said, "I rested upon the Sabbath." The calendars have been changed so many times since Adam till now. We don't know what day is the Sabbath day. The only thing we can do, if you want to go by the new moons and the old moons and all that kind of stuff, you can do that uh, because that's the only way that you're going to get close to being anything accurate as far as uh, feast days and all that's concerned is, is to go that way and, and, and watch the moon because actually uh, 
the nation of Israel had what was called criers. They would sit up and wait for the first little sliver of the moon that they could see, and they would cry out and let everybody know that it was a new month. That's the only way they knew when the months changed. They didn't have a Gregorian calendar like we have a Gregorian calendar. Anyway, I get off on a tangent like this. Okay. Whew, I got to stop. Spell? I'm over my spell. Okay. okay. Uh, somebody I, asked. I'm passionate. You can tell I'm very passionate about <laughs> scripture. Yeah, I like my shirt. It says Jesus, um, way, truth, way, truth, and life. Life. I got seven new shirts, y'all. So y'all gonna be seeing my shirts off and on. Um, somebody wanna know were we gonna be getting any new chickens? Uh, we might because my chickens are about three years old, but they're still laying really, really good. And we have the ah. Isa Browns. What is that? Pink. Uh, we might. Pink Barasol is a Baruch Atai Danilo, Heinu, Melikako, Halam, B. Mitzvitav, Vitsivano, El Halik Shir Shabbat. Okay. Um, all right. So if anybody's interested in shirts, I don't have a link that I get paid, but it is Love in Faith. I N. Love in Faith. And Miss Lippy may put a, a link to their stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Vego Beds has a sale going on on one of them. Um, I forgot what it was that we're selling. Uh, there's a good sale. Y'all had to check it out through our link, but I, I've got to find where they told me what it was. Uh, How long have we been married, Michael Ingley says. We've been married 11 years. In a month or so. In one month, a little over a month, we'll be married 11 years. Okay, what have they got? Oh, spring is in the air. 30% off on the Vego. Um, but there there was a, a specific thing. And she must have sent an email. I don't remember. But I had a code that, on it and all. But I put it on somewhere and I forgot. I can't remember all these social medias to put it on. Farm Boy Eli says, Have you stocked the pond at Pecan Grove? If so, with what? Yes, we have videos uh, on Pecan Grove of what we stocked it with and how we stocked it and showed me releasing the fish into the pond over a year ago. Yes, we do have videos on that. All right, what breed of rabbits do we have? We have the Tamuk rabbit from Texas A&M. They are able to withstand the heat. They make a very large rabbit and a very good rabbit. They don't eat a lot, but they sure are mighty big rabbits. Miss Beverly says she just got her first Vego bed uh, assembled and filled. She she said she wished she had four more. Good. We're going to be giving away one soon. Y'all get us to 300000 Oh, uh, Aaron Mast says, we pick off potato bugs. Is there any way to keep them off? Actually, what is it now? Uh, I can't tell. I want to tell something, but I, if I do, I'll mess up my tip for tonight. Um, <laughs> uh I can't remember what it is that you plant with to, with potatoes to repel the uh, the potato bug. Was it the um, French marigolds that I bought? No, oh, you gotta give me a minute. You have to hang on here. You have you to do go this. You gonna go get your book? I got. I it's. I was just going through this. All right. So Giovanna has asked this several times. What is the best castor oil brand to take internally? I really don't know. I haven't taken castor oil since I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like the taste of it, and I don't like the texture. Um, I use other things now, but um, I'm not a doctor, so but I I don't have a. Oh clue. yeah, we don't uh, we don't do that. Pamela yeah. says she's making her own colloidal silver and combine it with a huge aloe gifted. Hey, colloidal silver and aloe is good. Yeah, we're at two ninety nine and. I forgot. We like less than 600, I think, hitting. But 600 takes a while. Yep. Is horse manure just as good as cow manure? Uh, yes, but look out. Watch out for uh, uh, amino prylids in it. Now, this is crazy. We, this we do have a link for the soil testing kit. Miss Allison was putting it up a while ago. It is Grower Solution dot com slash deep south i think or something like that and then um when, once you get there you take and go go to the soil kits nastrums nastrums and rosemary nasternums nasternums that's it i don't i can't ever say she can that never word. say that word okay chris may be here all right let me go see uh i heard our we have a monitor system that lets us know if anybody moves on this property 
and we have different ones for different areas and I just heard a particular sound which tells me that Chris is probably in the driveway uh, I thought I would find that about the uh, uh, potatoes for you guys but um, let me look under something else here I'm trying to uh, I wanted to be able to help you out let me do this way let me do this right here you see this you see this book right here let me find it. let me get in front of the camera carrots love tomatoes secrets of companion planting for successful gardening this book right here is one of the best books that by let me get the author by Louise Roetti I guess a Rioti Rioti however you say that uh, this has been one of uh, the best books I have ever found for companion planting uh, it, it works it has just been been really really good and I sure hope Ms. Wanda has taken Chris his potatoes I don't know if she picked them up when she walked out or not um, I hope she did uh, but anyway um, carrots love tomatoes yes that is probably did you give Chris his potatoes I'm working on them. okay uh, uh, Catwoman 63 says I have that book it's great yes this is one of the best uh, the best books I think I've ever found for companion planting now I have several other books on companion planting I have the gardener's Bible and all kinds of other books but this one right here is my quickest go-to book right here uh, it was published uh, it was first published in 1975 it's just a fantastic book uh, when my mother uh, passed away I went through a lot of her stuff and I actually found out my mother had a ton of books on uh, gardening and stuff like that which really um, which really has been a blessing to me over the years um, uh, let's see here Janine Ward says hi Danny when should we uncover our sugar cane uh, do not uncover your sugar cane until all danger of frost is gone when the frost is gone you can uncover your sugar cane uh, okay Mississippi Soldier 369 says how many times can I harvest purple hole peas and snow peas Purple hull peas, we usually get two to three good pickings off of them. Uh, I don't grow snow peas. Uh, I do grow the regular English peas, and we get usually three, three good pickings off of the English peas, sometimes four if the weather is permits. Uh, Sandra Farman says, can I use pine chips on potatoes as mulch no 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 do not use pine chips on potatoes as mulch because you'll be inviting in many different types of insects and stuff like that that's not good for potatoes plus pine chips rob the ground of a lot of nitrogen and potatoes are a heavy nitrogen feeder so it's not really good to do that uh, Spring K says aphids on seedlings advice please usually if you have aphids on anything uh, you have a lack of ladybugs which is a beneficial insect uh, you may be using too much nitrogen uh, too much nitrogen ca causes aphids to come in usually unhealthy plants uh, bring about an aphid infestation so you kind of got to figure out it's one of those three things there you kind of got to figure out uh, what you need to do to be able to fit to you know to find out what the actual problem is it you know is it too much nitrogen or is you know is my plant suffering and you know from some other way is it unhealthy in some kind of way or whatever uh, let me see here but I, I got to put my glasses on uh, Let's see. Oh, uh, they found the Bible. That's yeah. my dad's. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I remember this. This was my dad's Bible. 
We didn't find that when we were out no, there. No, we didn't find it when we were out there, and this is in large print, too. It's yeah, actually got, it's actually got mold on it. Yeah, it's got to be cleaned. We'll have to clean it, but, uh... That's a big... Oh, they, Mom even had his name put on it. Yeah. Okay. She thought it was yours. No, 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 that's my dad's. Yeah. No, no, that was my dad's Bible. Gosh, that Bible must weigh 10 pounds. I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we donated a bunch of medical stuff. Yeah, we donated a to ton of medical to supplies. Take people that need it. It's needy people. So, um, yeah. we were trying to help help out a few people here. Um, yeah. So, did you get in trouble while I was gone? No, actually, I think I behaved myself rather well. Did he behave? Yeah, I think I behaved rather well. Usually, he goes off on a deep end if I leave him alone. No. <laughs> uh, uh, Wisdom of Words says, Pamela, I use Essiac tea for stomach issues. Helps tremendously digesting and acid. Essiac that, tea is a... I used to make Essiac tea for my wife who had cancer. And I made and it for some fri a friend that had stomach issues, and it helped tremendously. Essiac tea was actually a cancer uh, cure up in Canada for, for many, many years. It helped with a lot of issues that yeah. people who had cancer had. We can't say that it and I was, can't say it was a cure, but um, it, 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 it helped the cancer patients. Yes. And uh, Marie Casey. Yes, Marie And what Casey. was funny... Danny and I didn't meet for two weeks after, wasn't it two weeks? Or was it longer? We talked for two we weeks. We talked for two weeks before I ever met you face to face. Yes, yeah. we talked. And the first night we were talking, I studied herbs and all this, and I had an herb room, and I had all my herbs and stuff. And uh, we were talking, and we were talking about his wife that had passed who had cancer. And I said, I mentioned the Essiac tea. And he goes, oh, yeah. And he started naming off what was in it. And I'm like, there's no way. Back then, not too many people studied herbs. And he was, I, w I was thinking, he was really good with the keyboard. And he was typing it all in. Come to find out, he knew as much as I did about e Essiac tea. And he oh, had yeah. made it as much as I had. I so. had made it with Slippery Elm and all the different hands. things. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I was fixing to read a comment. Took my glasses off. Um, let's see here. Lula Porter. What can kill my blooming tomatoes within two days? I noticed the leaves dropping one day, and then they turn brown the next. A fungus? Well, the first question I'm going to ask Lula is, did the leaves begin to curl up? Because if the leaves begin to curl up, what killed your tomatoes more than likely was an amino prilid. Uh, the amino prilids usually wait till something gets up and gets to growing. I actually had some that had big old fruits on them, big tomatoes and everything on them, and my leaves started curling up, and boy, the next thing I knew, all the plants were just dying, going wacko on me. It was just like they just started wilting down, and I found out my whole bed had amino prilids in it from cow manure. All right, so where are we at? Uh, what herb <coughs> book would you recommend, what herb book would you recommend for healing? Oh, an what herb is, book for what is the name of that book? We have it. Uh, we have the book. I just. I can't think of the name of it. I don't have time to go dig it out. Prescription for herbal healing. Is that the name of it? I think so. I prescription think, for herbal healing sounds our right. Prescription for. They have several. Yes. When you look it up, I want to <clears> say Phyllis. Bach, B A C H. If I'm not, I, I don't quote me. We have a link down in the description of the live. Miss Lippy Mike can pull it up right quick. I think it's called Prescription for Herbal Healing or Na Prescription for Natural Healing. That might be it by Phyllis Bach. I'm 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 almost mm. sure, not 100%, but kind of. That's Aaron, one of the best. Aaron Mass says, what is the name of the rabbits and where do you get them? They are called Tamuk rabbits. They are from Texas A&M. We got ours from some dear friends up in central Mississippi. Uh, the McMillans? Yes. Yes. Prescription for nutritional healing. Yes. That's it. Is Sandy Soil the best for growing brown onions? Brown onions? 
<laughs> I don't know why I, I know what a know brown a onion brown. is. I've I never... guess they're saying because the, the skin on it turns brown on the outside. I... That's what they're calling a brown the, onion. The biggest issue with onions is making sure you got the right variety for where you live at in the United States. They have short day, long day, and day neutral. Uh, we have to, we're in the deep south. We have to grow the short day varieties. If you're above the 35th parallel, 33rd to 35th parallel, you probably do the day neutral. And if you get above that, then you have to have the long day variety. So you got to make sure, first of all, you got the right variety. And, and then Allison load it up with the, nitrogen. you got onions, love water, and they love nitrogen. Allison has the link, a uh, prescription for nutritional healing. So she, she's put our link. I think it's in the description below. Um, so that's my, my go-to book. I've had that book for more than 20 years, probably 25 or better. And that is one of my favorite books of all times to look things up because it, it not only covers herbs, but it tells you what to eat, what not to eat, which a lot of these books do. But it just seems to be one of the easiest, quickest ways to find things for me because I've used it for so long. And um, another one would, I can't, it's a yellow, Tinny, Louise Tinny. Uh, I can't remember her book, but mine is yellow, and I don't know if all of her books are yellow or they've changed the color, but Louise Tenney, T-E-N-N-E-Y, has an herbal book that I've used for over 35 years. Okay. Um, Stacy, was that say, Weisshart? Yes. What is a good peach variety for Southwest Mississippi? Uh, Southwest Mississippi. That would be Carrier, uh, Picayune, um, bordering Louisiana, or anything that borders Louisiana <laughs> from from Columbia South, Poplarville, Poplarville, yeah, up through that way, a Henley Field, anywhere around in that area, uh, all the way down to Nicase and uh, Hancock County, I guess. But uh, you can grow a lot of different ones, like June Gold is a good one uh alberta is a good one and to be honest with you wanda and i grew some of the best peaches we've ever had in our life from a peach tree that i uh actually got the peach seeds out of a roadside stand and planted the seeds and it came up as was a seedling that grew some of the best peaches we've ever grown in our life but now we do have the june gold and the Alberta's planted right now. All right. Uh, you planted a new tree at Pecan Grove, didn't you? Two. Oh, citrus. oh. Citrus. What, what was that? That was citrus. Got? We got the Arctic Freeze. Arctic. Arctic Frost. Frost. That's Arctic it. Frost citrus trees. We planted those over at Pecan Grove. And now, if you're looking, uh, if you're looking for a good peach tree. And you want a dwarf peach tree. Ronald, Betty, no. I can uh, see your post. You need to look for what's called an empress, E-M-P-R-E-S-S, -E -S -S, peach. It is a dwarf peach tree that makes the absolute best peaches that we've ever had. The empress peach does very, very well. The red haven is another one that does really, really good. Yeah. Uh, praise report. Rose that wants to move said that her white blood count is in the normal range and the rest of the blood work is coming back into normal range also. Hey, Amen. That's great. That is so good. What is the lowest temperature spaghetti squash can handle? Uh, they can handle anything down to about 35, I'd say 35 degrees. It's not good on them. But they can handle down to about 35, as long as it doesn't frost. Okay. Um, what else we got going on? Are dry leaves good for potatoes and peppers? Uh, dry leaves are not good, Nadia, for, for potatoes. Um, because they make the soil... I know they make the soil more acidic, but dry leaves just... 
they have nothing there. Potatoes are heavy nitrogen feeders. You need the nitrogen. And now peppers, it's not going to hurt your peppers, but it's also not going to really benefit them a lot either. Now, if you chop the leaves up and like mulch them, it's really good for the uh, peppers. But it's not just piling them on there. It doesn't really do any good. It takes too long for them to break down. Peace of Heart Homestead said, finish my chemo this week. All right. I pray everything goes well with you. Sleepy Pig says they have figs. Ours is starting to put on the buds, so I know it's not long. We have, what, apricots? We have apricots bloomed out, peaches bloomed out, pears bloomed out. Blueberries. Blueberries, huckleberries. huckleberries uh Blackberries. The blackberries. What's the tree? Strawberries. With the, the trees with the thorns on. Mayhaws. Yeah, the uh, mayhaws. Our uh, plums. Uh, plums. The uh, oh, the tree that we got from Grow uh, Grow Family. Um, Comquat? No. No. Loquat. Loquat. We are loquats, loquats are starting to bloom from Grow Family's yeah. homestead network. Grow Family network. Work. Network. Yeah. They and they're covered. Yeah. The first ones fell off because it got cool, cool on them, but the, they covered again. Um, Robin's Nest says their loquats are producing tons of fruit. I hope ours do this year. This I hope ours our does. This will be our first good. Now, ours, back in the winter, believe it or not, they bloomed out and had them all over them, but then the freeze killed them. Miss D is back from her trip, I guess. I saw her. At she the was beginning. in here a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw her at the beginning. She took her a trip. Oh, did she? Yeah, she took her a trip. I hadn't talked to her yet, but I guess she's back or she's on her trip bored as all know. get out watching us. <laughs> maybe so. If watching us, maybe she's just bored, yeah. Mm. Oh, Linda Dyke says, I have baby peaches and dewberries that are blooming. Yeah, everything's out here. Everything is out here. No more frosts and freezes for us, according to the weather people. So maybe this year we get some. Miss Barbara said, prayer request for her son with ALS. We need a miracle. So y'all remember Miss Barbara's son. Um, We're talking about vinegar and salt and dawn to get rid of poison ivy plants. That just might do it, but it you gotta watch it. what you put it around because yes. it might the salt might kill something around you don't yes. want to kill. And, if you, and the easiest thing is what use what they call agricultural vinegar. This store bought vinegar is only like four percent now. Sometimes it's five percent. The agricultural vinegar is twenty five percent, but you have to be very careful because it will burn you. you right, y'all remember, remember Miss Delma's sister Norma in the hospital? Um, I saw. Um, I saw a oh. gardener in here. She, uh, y'all remember her? She's taking her chemo treatments. Okay, let me stop right here if I can figure out where is this at. James Kylie says I found that my place in Tennessee has changed from growing zone six to zone seven. Did yours change? Yes, ours changed from eight to nine. That's because of the heating of the earth right now the earth is going through magnetic field changes and it's getting actually getting hotter uh we're going through solar cycle 25 all this stuff is don't let them fool you into thinking it's all man-made it's not all man-made uh it's a cyclical event that the earth goes through every so many years and guys we're just in that cycle the earth is going to get hotter for the next several years so don't don't fall prey to these carbon credit things. Uh, we're not going to be selling any Cherokee Tan pumpkin seeds this year, I don't think. Uh, Danny saved a bunch, but he didn't like the looks of them, so he's going to plant some and see yeah. if they look better this year because we had the drought last year, and it it just the seeds just didn't look as yeah, good as they, they have look been as good. looking. So we're going to see if they're they're viable. But, so we're Due not... to this Amy B, this is a question there. Okay. I don't see. Uh, how do you, how did do white sweet potatoes taste? I have orange and white sets to make slips. If you know how the purple and yellow sweet potatoes taste, please share. Okay, let me share a little bit with you. The white sweet potato. I love the white sweet potatoes, especially if it's a Nancy Hall. No, I'm not crazy uh, about. But them. now they don't have the sweet taste 
that the uh, that the red ones do, like the uh, Beauregards, the, the you know the, the Georgia Jets or uh, the the Centennials and all that kind of stuff. They don't have the sweetness uh, that those have. The Puerto Ricans, uh, the white ones are usually more starchy than the red ones are. The purple ones are very bland. Uh, they are probably the worst of the worst for me with the purple flesh. But now there are some white sweet potatoes that are really, really good, which are called the Okinawan uh, sweet potatoes and the Musakis. Uh, the Musaki and the Okinawan sweet potatoes have a purple skin on the outside, but they have a white flesh on the inside. They're good. They're good, but now they're very, uh, they're usually hard. They don't cook out tender and soft like the orange ones do. But they have a good taste they have a for fan french fries and stuff like taste that. taste for french fries and things. Yes, yeah, stir frying and things like that. If you want to cut them up in small pieces, they do fantastic for that. All right. Um, several people asked him for prayer. And then Brad H. 74 says, Do you think canning is necessary skill if you're gardening or is vacuum sealers and uh, good enough with a deep freeze. It's according to how okay. you like to eat them. Well, no, no, no. First. Let's look at the... we got to back up here. Um, we got to look at it from a, a logistical standpoint. If, we're going to get technical. <laughs> if, um, if there's no electricity, mm -hmm. and let's say you have a uh, an LCE, a life-changing event, say a tornado comes through, a hurricane comes through, uh, the power system goes down for some reason. Uh, a transformer blows somewhere, and you're without power for a week or two at a time. Uh, we've been up to 20-something days without power here after hurricanes. Uh, which is going to make it through that? Uh, the vacuum sealed in a freezer or the, something that's been canned? Mm -hmm. That's the way we look at it. Canning always wins out to us. Now... Does vacuum sealing have a few more nutrients? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the ultimate goal would be to freeze dry. If you have stuff that's freeze dried, it maintains 90-something percent of its nutrition and minerals and stuff like that and can last up to 25 years or more. Uh, the next best to freeze drying would be canning. Uh, putting something in a freezer is a absolute last resort. And a quick, and you need to eat within if you need to eat, a few months. Yeah, that's because stuff that stays in a freezer over a year, even if it's vacuum sealed, a lot of times gets freezer burned. Now, we have seen some exceptions. Wanda and I ate some sweet corn. It had been in there since 22? Mm -mm. No, 20. It was 19 or 20. 19 or... It was 20. It was 20, yes. Since since 2020, which was four years old. It got lost in the it freezer. It got lost somewhere. in the bottom of the freezer and we found it. Now, it was technically as good as it was the day we put it in there. But that was highly unusual. I will tell you yeah. that. Uh, usually, I grew up putting in the freezer. That's all we ever did. My mom canned a few things like jellies and jams and green beans and stuff like that, tomatoes. Um, but when my kids come along, I started branching into canning. And I love being able to just open a jar, heat it, and eat. It's the, it's the best quick fix meal you ever had. And you can take jars of food and just make all kinds of meals. You just yeah. got to get inventive. Um, but freezing is very... You need to eat it within the yeah. Few if you're gonna put anything uh, in the freezer, you need to even eat it. vacuum sealed, if it lasts two years. But again, if the power goes out, you got to do something. Yeah. And uh, so my favorite way is canning. Freeze dried is the next best. Yeah. But I did find in mm -hmm. freeze drying that I did lose some things this past couple of years because number one. I didn't have an instruction booklet step by step, and it would be hard for the freeze drying company to do step by step because all of us live in different areas, and there's so many variables variables with freeze drying. You have to learn your area and how long to run yeah. it and all that stuff. But we found out a way to make sure. I just ran the freeze dry a lot longer than what it when it kicked off. I ran it again, and 
that saved a lot of our food. I took the first month, we probably took out most everything when it kicked off the first time and we vacuum sealed it. We even did it in the rain. We didn't know that the rain was leaking humidity into our stuff and we'd right. take the trays out and put them out and then bag. So yeah, there's a lot of freeze drying weirdness. You got to learn your freeze drying. Mississippi Soldier 369 says, why is Texas on fire? Well, if y'all watched us very regular, I've told y'all two different scenarios. I told you that Texas was burning underground. Um, and I also mentioned, anytime you see a state that goes against the federal government, whether it doesn't matter. I'm start buffering. I will probably start <laughs> buffering on this one. Anytime you see a state go against the federal government or, or bulk the federal government, that state begins to have massive issues and problems. Uh, we know that Abbott has, there's been a lot of things going on with the border down there. I just done a video about that. Uh, and now you see Texas paying the price for that. Oklahoma backed Texas with uh, National Guards. You'll see Oklahoma start having problems. Any state that starts backing other states and goes against the federal government, you will see that state begin to have problems. Don't ask me why or how. I'm not going to go into kind of details about that. But if you notice, it's, but it, it is, just happens it every time. It happens every time. Um, Michigan Lifestyle says, just like Hawaii. Yep, just like Hawaii. Y'all, y'all... Y'all remember what happened in Hawaii with the with the lasers? Okay. Okay. We have been way past our time because oh, we, we started are going. early. We started early and still went past our time. Whoa. <laughs> <clears throat> um, oh man. Well, we've had an eventful week. Uh, you guys named our baby calf that was born today. Yes. Patreon named the last two. Um, the ones that are, that won the beans, you'll have to contact me by email at deepsouthhomestead@gmail.com. And the one that named the calf, if you will send me an email, y'all don't forget. Um, y'all go over at Pecan Grove. We that's where we're doing our gardening is over there. Subscribe to Pecan Grove um, if you want to watch anything we we're do. Not, we're not taking deep south away. We're just not gardening here right now. So you guys have to go over to Pecan Grove. I want to do some videos at Deep South, but it's not going to be gardening exactly. So we, I don't know. We're going to do updates maybe. Yeah. And most of our updates will be done here. And Danny will do porch time. And we'll throw in videos because we still have cows and stuff. We still have things going on. But we're kind of in between both places with our animals and our gardening is all at Pecan yeah. Grove. Um, okay, we need to pray, guys. Everybody here is, we don't we don't held y'all too long. That's the honest and goodness truth. We never intended uh, to keep everybody this long. My hair, well, I've had a rough hair day. <laughs> I don't have much hair. Okay, anyway. look. Let's see. I don't know which one goes where. And he, it doesn't somebody, matter. This one's going that way. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Way. I don't <laughs> care. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man. It's all over the place. Okay, well, anyway, let's go to the Lord I like Miss Gina. I'm voting for Jesus in November. Can, we can just write him in. We could put Jesus in there. Yes, we could. I think Mississippi has something we're supposed to be voting this week. or, or I have no idea. We can, we need to pay attention because I saw something pop up on my phone, and I said I didn't know we was voting yet. And it's it's one of those, I think, representative things. Or something. You know, I saw that sign this morning. Yep. We need to check into that if that's this week or next week or the week after. I don't okay. ever know. Okay. Anyway, Father, we're so thankful that you've been good to us this week. Thank you for the birth of all the calves this week, and none of them had any problems, Lord. Amen to that, Father. You were good to us. You have blessed the homestead this week. And, Father, I, I look at the people that's been in the chat tonight, and, Father, so many of them have put up prayer requests. I want to lift up each and every one of them before you in the name of Christ. I pray, Lord that you would answer the request that they put up, Father, in a way that would best glorify you and, and and really glorify the kingdom of heaven at the same time and be a blessing to the people. Father, we, we think about uh, there's so much going on in this country right now. Uh, since your hand has been lifted off of this nation, 
we're beginning to see the uh, the effects of that. We want to pray for the people out there in Texas for all the wildfires going on. Father, you, there's good people out there. We got subscribers that have t that have personally messaged us that's in the zone of the fires, and Lord, they they're hurting. Uh, some of their best friends and neighbors have lost everything. And Father, we pray for those people diligently that you would be merciful to them. And, and not just Texas. There's fires going in a lot of different other states also. Uh, and and we, like we mentioned, those standing for right right now seem to be getting knocked down pretty hard with some stuff. We know that they've changed the weather patterns, Lord. We know that the, the, the 33rd parallel and up is going to really be getting some cold and some, some bad weather for the near future. And Father, we know that down south here, we're just going to get the heat and the dry and the drought and all this kind of stuff. And while we sit and watch people up north freeze to death, I mean, it's, and, and some people are going to get flooded, Lord. In your scriptures, they, there's verses in your scriptures, Lord, that you talk about one city will be rained on and flooded out and other cities will have a drought. Father, that is literally in your word. And we know that you're keeping your word in these latter days now. So Father, the, the ones that, that need financial help, I pray you'll give them financial help. The ones that need spiritual help, Lord, I pray that you'll give them spiritual help. The ones that need physical help, I pray you'll give them physical help, Lord. The ones that need mental help, I pray you give them mental help, Father. There's all these areas in our lives where we just cling to you and ask that you would please come in and meet our needs, Father. And Father, we'll, we'll be careful, I promise you, to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory and we will we will uphold your name and we will say that it is good to have gone to the house of the Lord and we will say that it is good to be a child of the King, Father. Please help us to not be worried. Please help us to not be concerned, scared, or anything, Father, because it is you, Father, only you, who was able to open the seals in the book of Revelation, in the in the in the vials and the bowls and all these things that were poured out upon mankind. It could only be done by you, Father, and you would not do anything to your own people. And we pray that people will have wisdom enough to realize that because you pour out all these things and you open these seals up, that you have your children's best interest at heart and that you're going to take care of them and you're going to protect them through all these things that begin to happen upon the earth now. Go with us. God direct us through the night, and we ask that you forgive us where we failed you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Woo! Gosh, I don't want to keep my eyes closed too long at one time. Um, uh, I was going to say, you might mention the, the corn incidents that we heard about. The, what state was that in? Elko. Was it Elko? Nevada? Was it Nevada? I don't remember. Yeah. Train derailment. We had a huge train derailment in, if I get the name of this town right, I think it's called Elko, Nevada. Uh, we lost 12 carloads of corn. March a, the 12th. March the 12th. Thank you, Patty. I uh, knew it was coming up. Uh, uh, but we lost, uh, we lost 12 carloads of grain, corn, this past week, I think it was El Elko. Is that how it something like E L E L K K O or Elko? something? I don't uh, remember. I think uh, it was in Nevada, but this never came up on the news. Uh, we never saw anything about this on the news. It might have been mentioned once or twice uh, in that state or whatever, but yeah, Danny was watching them. Take I was watching them take track hose and just hose. and just dig out this corn and just throwing it over to the side and I'm thinking, twelve carloads of corn. Oh, what that could have fed. Yeah. Man, it just man, just it just irritates me. But anyway, tip of the week. Elmo. Elmo. Was it Elmo? No, Elko. It had a K in it. I'm pretty I sure. It, it, I thought it had a K. Um, Elko. Yeah. Elko, Nevada. Yeah. That's it. Thank you, Elko. Wasp. And, uh, and Chris Trap, yeah. And Chris, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, the calf's name is Samson. Samson. We decided to name it Samson. Um, it was. It was El Elko, Nevada, and uh, a lot of food went to waste, guys. And when things like this start happening, 
our food system takes a hit, and we can't Allison afford it. Allison there was one in Pennsylvania today. Wow. wow. Another one. See, this stuff is not coming up on... Well, I don't watch TV, but it's just not coming up in the news line. Yeah. Um, 16 cars, not 12. So there was 16 of them. <laughs> well, they said 12. Yeah, I know, but you uh, never know. Um, it's a waste of food. It was a huge waste of food. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it'll be thrown away or not, but Danny said they were actually using a... What'd you say, a track hoe? They were using track hose to, to actually take it out to, and put, to dig it out where out they could, the you know, and, and pile it out to the sides. I mean, um, I don't know what it'll be sold at or used as. Um, it might go in your food and it and may be it playing in it, putting it in the dirt, and then putting uh, it knows? back. And, oh, just who the knows? thought. Anyway, tip of the week, guys. As we move into this summer. It's no big secret that there's going to be a horrendous insect infestation this year in the United States. And oh. because of that, I see the tornado warnings Torn in California. Yeah, Christy said they just had a tornado warning uh, in California. That's, that's highly unusual. unusual. Yes. But we're going to have a huge infestation of insects in the United States this year. Not only from the cicadas, not only from the locusts, but from... Tons of other insects are coming into the United States this year. They already know it, and they're trying to make preparations for it. So what I want to encourage each and every one of you to do right now is to begin to learn about companion planting. Because certain plants repel insects. Certain plants planted around certain things repels diseases. We have diseases coming this year, and we have insects coming this year. The only way we're going to be able to combat that without the use of heavy pesticides is, and insecticides is simply going to be by companion planting. This thing of us planting 100 onions in one bed, we're going to have to stop doing that, and we're going to have to start planting an onion and a companion plant that goes along with the onion that deters the... Uh, the, the thrips and stuff that spread the, the diseases amongst the onions. We're going to have to learn to plant basils with tomatoes and different things like this to be able to deter the insects unless you just want to go spray the chemicals. We don't want to spray the chemicals this year. Uh, start Invest in row covers. Wanda and I invested in several packs of row covers. Yeah, and I, I bought... Uh... I, and I bought, I didn't seed start because I'm buying a lot of things this year um, due to the yeah, fact that I was there. not feeling too well. And uh, I bought the French marigolds and planted in some of the containers and down in the, um, by the 60 foot raised bed. Um, what else did I buy? I don't know, but this is what they want to see. Oh, the book, go down. Carrots love tomatoes and who is it by? I had to, uh, up, you come get out of the way. There we go, by Louise, Louise Rioti. Yeah. This is the book right here. You can probably find it on Amazon. Now, this is the updated uh, version, the yeah. revised edition of it right here. They, they make a lot of different other editions of this, but this is the revised one. Mickey <clears throat> gets hands on those pesky critters. He stays on top and underneath. Yeah, you got to go uh, under every leaf and pay attention. Uh, and black lights. Mr. You do have black lights. Mr. Here. Donnie says, I have fire ants in one of my raised beds in the greenhouse. I have tried everything. Mr. Donnie, take you a stick and just start jobbing that ant bed. Just start jobbing it. Every time you go out there, just start jobbing it. And take you about a half a cup of gasoline and pour it down in the hole. As soon as you job a deep hole and then smooth the dirt over on top of it. And a little bit of gasoline is not going to hurt your raised bed, but it will get rid of those fire ants. They will move. <laughs> oh, they'll move to another place, but you'll kill everything right there in that and area. And they'll keep on. They'll, they'll eventually. They will eventually that's leave. That's how Danny got rid of them in our in I got of rid of them beds. in our in ours that way, and we and we haven't we Holly haven't suffered Smith anything. Holly Smith got her Vego bed today. Good. Um, Danny got our trellis up and. We're really liking the looks of the trellis. It's a heavy-duty trellis. It's not a cheap-made anything. Yes. And uh, 
So y'all watch and see what he's going to put on that trellis. I got it ordered. I did find what he wanted and hopefully it'll be in this week. Okay. I don't know for sure. Tina Summer says, do fire ants kill termites? No. Fire ants and termites all live in the same bed. I don't think fire Cinnamons, ants kill anything. They cinnamon say. for ants. Cinnamon only works on normal ants. These are, um, imported. are imported fire ants. They do not stop imported fire ants. <clears throat> Row covers and needed pollen. Now, if you put row covers over something that needs poll pollinated, you then will, you go, you're going to mess up. Because mess we up. tried that one year with yeah. squash. We put a, a row cover over the squash. It helped keep the bugs out, but the pollinators couldn't get to it, so we ended up having to take it off. So you have to take everything off during the day, put it back on at night. Um, and you can do that if you want to, but nighttime's when most of your bugs bother okay. your plants poppy seeds says what to do about cucumber beetles i don't spray and hardly ever get cucumbers or cantaloupes as they are so bad makes me so mad order this book right here there is all in there about getting rid of uh cucumber beetles and all that off of your cucumbers i will tell you this it probably has something to do with uh uh What's your little plant you Marigolds? like to know the little uh, that you can't never grow? <laughs> My mind just went oh, blank. Radishes. Radishes, radishes everywhere, y'all. Y'all plant radishes. Let them grow. I think go to Slippy does this a lot. Go to seeds. Do not harvest them. Let them go to seeds. Put them around your squash. They repel squash bugs. I'm going to let them all all our secrets. If I keep telling them this stuff, everybody's going to be able to garden as well as we do. Well, I ain't planted radishes all over the place but that's coming up y'all gonna see our raised beds are gonna have radishes everywhere and just one or two seeds all around and let them go to seed you're not gonna be growing them to eat it's gonna get too hot here anyway yeah and if they grow they're gonna grow i'm really good at growing the plants i'm not very good at growing the radishes so i got Radish seeds out all kinds, all varieties. We have radishes everywhere. <laughs> We're facing to try again this Actually, year. if you, well, it's in this, uh, you'll find it. I think you'll find it in this book it, right it work, here. Yeah, it works on every. Uh, radishes are good for many, 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 many plants. plants if you grow them around stuff. Um, um, and yes, uh, barn, barn owl 67, nasternums for cucumbers. Nasternums are really good for a lot of things. Yeah. And if you have nematodes, let me tell you something. A lot of people have nematode problems. Let me let me just get right up here in y'all's face. Um, to get rid of nematodes, make you a mixture of sugar water. Put it on the sto stove and boil it. Dissolve all the sugar. <laughs> My kryptonite. And let it come. Let it let it get cool, and then put it in a sprayer and spray it on all your plants. It attracts the pollinators, and it gets rid of the nematodes. Okay. Actually, it dries the nematodes out. This, uh, the outer skin of the nematodes, it dries them out. Yeah, we can't do much with the earth, with the ads that come up. Uh, no, we have no problem. Now, we after can't. this live stream post, I mean, it'll stay up, but they have to do their thing. It'll take a couple of hours. Uh, I can go and take a few ads out, but during the live stream, Part when we're live, I can't do anything about it. They just put them wherever they want. Okay, Tina Summer says, "What kills termites without harmful harmful chemicals? What is your yarrow? Get you the herb yarrow, but be prepared. It's very invasive, but it does get rid of termites." Okay. All right, guys. Okay, look, we done been on here an hour and a half over an, an hour, hour over an hour and a half. We've got to let these people go to sleep. We don't sleep. We're only half human. We don't have to sleep I'm all the time. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to tell you. I like my sleep. I'm half human. I don't have to have all the sleep. He you don't have. need a whole lot of sleep, but no. I need my sleep. Right. Okay. Y'all be good. We'll see y'all Love y'all. Hopefully a porch time. I don't know if we're going to have video. These these babies about wear These me babies out. about wore me out. I don't even know if I got energy enough to do a porch time, but we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll find out how it goes. I'll edit it if he gets it done, guys. Woo! Thank you for stopping by. Yes.